So as the war rages on, the Christmas season is taking on a decidedly more somber tone throughout the region. Bethlehem, revered by Christians as the birthplace of Jesus, is typically flooded with tourists at this time of year as it hosts a variety of Christmas celebrations. But right now, the West Bank town is largely empty. Even the usually busy church of the Nativity is devoid of tourists. And their absence is being acutely felt by shopkeepers who have seen a virtual halt to business since the war began. Normal, by normal year without any problem and there is a lot of visitors in the city, it's really good season and good business. We earn a lot of money from that because, you know, you will find a thousand people from all over the world. You want to buy a gift for them, family from the Holy Land. But, you know, comparing to now, zero. And joining me now is Reverend Munther Isaac, pastor of the Evangelical Lutheran Christmas Church of Bethlehem. Thank you so much for being here with us. So as I was just saying there, normally it's a festive atmosphere there, no longer for obvious reasons. Talk to me about the mood there in Bethlehem with Christmas, you know, virtually canceled. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um... We're sad, we're broken. Uh, Bethlehem is supposed to be the capital of Christmas. We're supposed to have hundreds of thousands of pilgrims uh, in the month of December. Uh, but if you visit Bethlehem now, not only are the streets empty, but uh, no decorations, no Christmas tea. Uh, we don't have the annual Christmas market that people visit from all over Palestine and the world. Um, the mood is down and honestly everyone is concerned and anxious about what is happening uh, in Gaza. Uh, this is a story, uh, the, the cancellation of Christmas celebrations is tragic but it is pointing to a deeper uh, story, to a more harsher reality that is in Gaza and this is where we think right now. Mm. And, and I mean, it's hit so many people hard, yourself as well as a, a Palestinian Christian. In your church, there's an image that's generated, you know, quite a bit of attention. Christ in a kufiya, in a manger under the rubble. Uh, e explain this for us. Yeah, in that spot in our church, we usually have our uh, traditional Christmas tree. Uh, this year, we wanted to explain Christmas first to the faithful, but also to send a message to the world uh, by creating this manger. Uh, to me, the connection was very natural. Jesus as a baby, born in a time of occupation of the Roman Empire, who himself survived a massacre when he was born, uh, became a refugee out of all places in Egypt. Uh, this is a very familiar story to us Palestinians. Uh, the meaning of Christmas to us is what we created in this manger, that God is in solidarity with us in our pain and suffering. We wanted to say that if Jesus is to be born today in our world, he will be born in Gaza with those children who are pulled from under the rubble every day. Uh, these images break us. Uh, these images are devastating for any human being. Uh, and what if we're Palestinians and we're very, very broken by them. And we say we see the image of Jesus, uh, the baby of Bethlehem, in every one of those children. It is, it is also a message to the world that this is what Christmas looks like in the birthplace of Jesus. Mm. Precisely that children pulled from under the rubble, uh, destroyed homes and, and displaced families. Yeah. So last month, you were, you were part of a delegation of Christian leaders from Bethlehem who came to Washington, D.C. to meet with congressional leaders. You also held a sermon at a church at Capitol Hill. I want to play one clip from that sermon. Listen to this. We're in D.C. And we had meetings at the Hill and at the White House. And it feels like speaking to a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. For how can such atrocities be justified? How is the killing of more than 6,000 children in less than two months accepted? Now, you felt then that your calls to support a ceasefire were falling on deaf ears. Has, has anything changed? Are you more optimistic now that the UN, uh, the, the U.S. ambassador to the U.N. says that, that she will uh, support a, uh, a resolution for a ceasefire? Well, it's been almost, what, uh, 23, 24 days since I said these words. Uh, and the number now is close to 9,000 children. We're appalled. We're devastated. Uh, 
we're, it's hard for us to understand how the world continues to accept this genocide as it continues. Um, we've been hearing calls uh, for uh, quite a while now, and we won't be satisfied until we see uh, a comprehensive and long-lasting uh, ceasefire. Uh, this is the only thing we ask this Christmas. This is the only thing we want to see. Uh, this must stop now because it, it's it's killing people who are who have nothing to do with the conflict. Uh, the father of my friend in Gaza just passed away a few hours ago because of lack of medical attention. He was in the church. They couldn't get him even to a hospital or get medicine. It's beyond horrific right now. Uh, and I can't understand how it continues and how the world is not urgent in calling for this uh, to stop. So, yeah, you know, we want to see action, not just promises and words, because we've been hearing these concerns and words for a while now. Uh, we won't believe it until we see it. And I hope it's not another humanitarian pause. Uh, this must stop and this must stop now. Yeah. Yeah, uh, condolences for for your friend, and I should say that the the U.S. calling for a suspension in fighting, not a ceasefire. Word, the, the difference uh, uh, is important, I guess, to to point out. Now, um, you are giving a, a, a liturgy of lament tomorrow. What what is your your main message? The message is that in this uh, Christmas season, when the world is celebrating in joyful ways, here in Palestine, we're lamenting. We're broken, we're devastated by the loss of our people, of our friends and of our family. We want it also to be a message to the world that silence is complicity, uh, that uh, we want to see churches acting, calling urgently for an end to this genocide. And our message is that uh, in the midst of our lament and devastation, we still have hope that as as believers, when we come around this manger and we look at Jesus in the midst of rubble, uh, we find hope. We find hope uh, and we will not lose our faith. Christmas celebrations are cancelled, but our prayers are not cancelled. And maybe our prayers are uh, a sign of our resistance as Palestinians in that we want to move on. We will continue despite all the odds. We'll end on that note of hope. Reverend Munther Isaac, thank you so much for speaking with us. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me.